many times have you heard the words, have you heard of Jimmy Creek? Ah, uh, too many. Yeah. Over it now? Nah, never get over it. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling amazing. Um, this is probably the easiest cut I've done. I'm, all my cuts are easy, but this is one of the easiest ones. Um, I'm ha I was halfway through my weight cut yesterday, and no, I never felt that sharp, even outside of a weight cut, so I'm ready to go. How come you're on this card and not in Melbourne? Um, numbers, ranked ranked opponent. That was that was basically it. We could have... Um, see, I wanted to fight Misha in August and, um, and then turn around for Melbourne, but... Misha wanted to fight here, which I don't blame him. If if I had the pull, because he's got the numbers, he's got he's got all that. He gets to decide where we fight, so we'll do that. First time in Canada. Yeah, and I love it. Well, you think there's a lot of Aussies here actually? I don't yeah. know that because the tourism and everything. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's it's really nice. It's a it's a beautiful city, and I'll be coming back for a holiday. Another fighter on the card, uh, Antonio Carlos Jr. He said that Vancouver reminded him of Australia. Did you get that? Vibe? It's like Melbourne. It's similar to Melbourne. Does all the travel complicate things for you in terms of the weight cut or preparation? Not at all. As I said before, my weight cuts are very, very easy. Um, and at the end of the day, like you can sit here and complain about having to travel, but I get paid to go travel the world and fight. Two things I love doing. So, is there any regret that you're not in Melbourne? Because obviously that car would be pretty fun. Um, no, I'll be in Melbourne. I just won't be fighting. So I'll be the drunk guy, cage side, screaming obscenities. That's almost preferable. That's, that's amazing, I can't wait. You were training with Robert Whittaker recently, what was that experience like? It was amazing. Uh, Rob's the best in the world for a reason, and I believe he, he's still going to be the best in the world after October 6th. Um, you know, he he's levels above anyone, I believe. And, uh, I learnt a lot, I learnt a lot. Is he level above everyone in Street Fighter? Or has that been more nah, he's pretty terrible. he's pretty terrible at Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Fab's, Fab's the undistributed Kim, King. If I, if I knew the buttons, I'd fuck them, I'd fuck them all up too. Uh, you said the cuts are so easy, uh, so easy that you would ever drop down one more division, or is this it's two or five below? No. Well, um, I don't understand why people cut so many weight. You see all the, all these middleweights coming up a lot heavyweight and having success. You see all the wealth weights going up to middleweight and having no su uh, success. I, I don't see the point in it. In it. Um, when I say their weight cuts are easy, I mean they're easy for my, like compared to most people. Um, I still have to cut a bit of weight. I'm, I am a big guy. I don't. A lot of people think I'm small for light heavyweight until until they get a hold of me and try and grapple with me, and then they go, "Oh, hang on a second, you're actually actually a decent size light heavyweight." So, you know, I, I don't ever plan to move down to middleweight until I, if I ever fight someone, if I ever lose a few fights in a row, and it's because the guys are bigger than me, I might think about it, but. Yeah, no. Would you want to match up with any of those guys coming up? Wide man, Rock Hall, Jacare. I'll say I'll fight anyone. I don't care. Um, you know, anyone after this fight, after I beat Misha Serkinov, anyone with a number next to their name, is fair game. Did Whitaker give you any advice heading into this fight? Um, not really. We we just trained alongside each other. Um, you know, any little bit of advice he gave me was greatly appreciated, and and I took it on. But you know, he's not right right now my game plan or anything. I still have Sam for that, even though he's out of action. I still have um, Sam to write my game plans and. You know, they, they could tell me here and there, you know, you've got to keep your hand up here or whatever, but um, it was more more just training, getting the work done, and, um, yeah. Rob's always said that his training camps and the way they train down there is not like anyone else, um, that they train hard and people just don't appreciate that. Having now trained there, is it as intense as he says? Yeah, yep. Um, and I really like their structure, the way they structured. I think, um, I think I was training just as hard in Melbourne, but the, the way they had everything laid out was just a little bit different um, and I was able to just grab what they, they're doing and sort of bring it back to Melbourne. Would you never do a full-time switch over there just to train him to be the champion? No. I, I would go up there for four weeks of a prep probably but um, I, I, what we have in Melbourne is just as good um, anywhere. Um, we have great wrestling, we have great jiu-jitsu, we have great striking. Uh, the thing with Melbourne is you just have to travel a little bit to get everything but we have everything. Um, not to say that anyone's better. Um, I, would, I would definitely be doing another trip out there for camps because all those boys are just work crazy hard, and it was. I, I just felt like I was a really good fit. But yeah, no, nah, Melbourne. Melbourne is my home, and that's where I'm going to stay. How do you see him versus that sign you're going? Um, I just think I just don't think Israel really knows what Rob's bringing to the table. Um, it's all right to watch Rob on film. But until you get in there, you just don't realise how quick he is and, and how crafty. 
Um, that being said, that's the, that, they're the two best middleweights in the world, in my opinion. Um, I would back Israel over any other middleweight. Um, I actually really like Israel. I'm a big fan. But, you know, Rob's my guy and he's been one of my favourite fighters since I've first seen him. So I'm, I know firsthand how good he is as well. I feel like with Rob there's this sort of like quite intensity that he seems like a really nice sort of chill, almost like kind of normal dude. And then I imagine when he's in there actually working, it's a different act. It's like a switch. He can go from joking to like, and then he clicks his fingers and that's business. And, you know, I really, I really liked that and I thought it was pretty cool to train along someone like that. I know you said you don't mind the travel, but do you enjoy the opportunity to come into a, a fighter's home country and kind of play spoiler, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I've pretty much had all my fights at home and um, everyone sort of come to me, but, you know, if you want, those, if you want the big dogs, you've got to go, sort of go to their territory and get them. Um, you know, I don't think it's... It's not like, oh, yeah, I'm going to come in and shut everyone up. It's more like it's a challenge, and I, I love a challenge. You know, coming some, come to someone's hometown and be, being the... The B side per se is a pretty cool little challenge, and I'm up for it. Have you seen him yet this week? Have you seen yeah, him he's a big boy. Yeah. Do you feel like the pressure's on him in this fight? It is in Canada, and he's coming up a losing streak. Nah, I think if anything, um, he won't have as much pressure on him. Um, he looks really relaxed. Um, at the end of the day, I think it'll be the best best Misha Serkinov there's been, and you know, he can bring whatever he wants. How do you see the fight unfolding on Saturday? Uh, it's going to unfold how it unfolds, and the, nothing I can do can sort of change it. Um, all I can do is just go in there with a good game plan and, and execute it. Um, I believe that I can get him out of there early, but at the same time I'm very well aware that that doesn't always happen, and I know that I can go three hard rounds. I know that he, I don't think he's going to got the got the power to put me away. I know that I have the power to put him away, so I just got to keep my defenses good and um, move around him a bit and put the lights out on him. Jim, you said he looked calm. You seem pretty calm, even keeled here, and even when you fight sometimes. What does it take to kind of get your blood going? Um, I don't know. I just I love it, so I don't really give a shit. <laughs> uh, Everybody you've had in the UFC has been against uh, an older veteran, uh, Paul Craig's and Aubrey Namisha. Uh, the matchmaking. How do you think that says what the officials um, think about you as a prospect? Um, I think I go to the matchmakers and I just basically said I, I, don't, I don't want easy fights. And I think they appreciate that. Um, they normally come to me with three names and I pick the hardest one. Um, so at this time they just said, oh, I said I want to rank the opponent. They said, oh, right, well, we've got Misha. I said, yeah, no problem, let's do it. Um, I, I feel like I'm a very easy fighter to work with just because I just want to challenge mm -hmm. myself. As a young fighter, I, I know you mentioned the, the middleweights coming up and stuff. Is there any concern that when they do come up based on name value, they may kind of skip some opportunities that might otherwise, or sorry, take some opportunities that might otherwise go to you? Well, whatever opportunity they take, they just build their name and then I'll take their name. So if they build their name by beating a lot of heavyweight, I'll beat them. You seem positioned to be another one of these breakout stars of light heavyweight from talking to your management. What are the UFC's expectations for you? Um, I'm just taking it one fight at a time. I don't think too far in the future. Um, Obviously, I know I'll be ranked after this, and then you know, I, I'm not I'm not in a rush, but I don't want to not fight. You know, I, I want to like if it was up to me, I'd fight five times a year. And um, when you do that, you climb up the ranks very quickly. And you know, I'm not in a rush, but I'm, I don't want to be stagnant either. I just want to keep going one fight at a time, and eventually that gets you to the top. We've talked a lot about. Um Light heavyweight being thin for a long time, it seems like there's this renaissance of new talent yourself, Johnny Walker, Dominic Reyes, Don Blakovich making a nice run. How does it feel to be part of this sort of new generation of fighters at 205? It's really cool, man. Like, if I was where in the position I am a year ago, maybe two years ago, I would already be in the top 10. You, get, you had two good performances and they put you in the top 10 at light heavyweight. Um, now, it's a little bit, little bit more tricky. Um, and it's sort of like a changing of the guard in a way, like, a year ago, light heavyweight was considered the worst, well, second worst apart from heavyweight in the in the division. Where now it's exciting, like from that top five to top fifteen, there's there's some guys that give them six months or give them a year. Like people are going to go fuck light heavyweight is stacked. Killer uh, main event on this card. Do you have a pick for uh, Cerrone and Gigi? Um, uh, Cerrone, I, I've been. If if you ask me. On any other day, who my favourite fighter is, it's, it's Donald Cerrone. Um, 
and I really like Gaethje too. And I, I know Gage, everyone says, oh, Gaethje's got the style to beat Cowboy, but Cowboy, Cowboy, if Cowboy kicks anyone in the head, they're going to sleep. So I, I, in my heart, I say Cowboy just because I'm a massive fanboy and you know, Cowboy is one of my favourites. Uh, so, so is Gaethje. I really like Gaethje's style and, and his personality. But um, I think just because of the watching him when I when I first got into the sport and stuff, I, I have to I have to say cowboy. Then I'm just going on my heart. I can't I can't place an educated bet on that.